So welcome back to another video and to the garage floor of this property, but why am I here? Well, we are here today to reveal the data from a test we've been running comparing microinverters against standard hybrid inverters to see if they're worth any extra money and should you consider them for your system. What we're going to do now is take a deep dive into how we set up this test and we're going to share that data with you so you can make your own mind up, is it worth the extra money? Right, so let's dive into system number one. This is our hybrid system. Now this is made up of five Q-Cell 400 watt all black panels. It's their duo range, really good panel, nice German manufacturer, premium product. Now to those panels, we wired them straight into this. This is a Sunsync 3.68 kilowatt Eco, I think it's ECCO inverter. This is a hybrid inverter rated at 3.68 kilowatt, which basically means it can convert DC power to AC, but it can also be connected to Sunsync batteries. Now, just a precursor to us doing this test, we actually installed this system for this client way before we even started installing microinverters. So this system had two Sunsync 5.32 or 23 kilowatt hour batteries attached to it and it was working fine. We approached this client and said, look, we're looking to do a test. Would you be interested if we compensated you for that so we can get our data to find out are the manufacturer claims of microinverters true? And more importantly, are the claims of REA true about their panels? So, this system was already in and working and we had lots of data from it and it had been super reliable. Let's check out the microinverter system. Right, this is our end phase. I'm just gonna move this bike, sorry. It's a very light bike. Right, so this is our end phase system. We use the end phase Envoy to monitor the system and we also paired it with the end phase IQ7 Plus microinverters. What we're gonna do now is take the cover off this and we'll show you how this records and manages the power. <laughs> so this is the Envoy, so this is the brains of Enphase, so if you have Enphase microinverters, all that hardware is up on the roof and all you need down below is one of these. This is like the communication gateway between your microinverters and your Enphase Enlighten app makes installation super simple because all that comes off the roof is one AC cable, there's no DC coming off the roof, and it wires straight into your consumer unit, and you just monitor it on these little CTs here for production. Now, we paired the Enphase microinverters with the REA Fusion Generation 1 panels. And why did we do this? Why didn't we just put it on the Q-Cell panels? Well, we wanted to test the recommended package that Heatable is selling to its customers against a standard package they could buy elsewhere. And this was gonna give us the best comparison in market. Okay, so like we said earlier, we already had this system installed. It had been installed for about 12 months, working fine, but we now take delivery of our new REA panels it's actually the first time we've ever seen them and our micro inverters from Enphase. So we set about removing five of the Q-cell panels, wiring up some AC lines down to that consumer unit and installing the micro inverters and finally putting those panels on. Now once that was all done, it was time to take a look at the real time data and to find out, were we actually producing any more energy? The system's alive, we're tracking it, we're all sat down and we're, everyone's ready for sort of this big reveal of you know how much more energy are we producing? We've got this display on Sunsync, we've got the end phase on here, and it's like 2%. So the whole office, uh, yeah, everyone's running around, scratching their heads, they don't understand. Well, my, you know, Michael, the REA, he's claiming that you're gonna get 15, 20%. We've spent all this money doing this test. We've got a customer who had to take his system off his roof and sort of convince him to let us do this. And we're now reporting a 2% improvement. And everyone was sort of disappointed and we sort of put the whole thing to bed for about a week. We're on the phone to REA and we're expressing our concerns and he lets us know something that we didn't realize about hybrid inverters. Okay, so what he tells us is that these hybrid inverters that are on the market everywhere only report the DC level of production on your roof and they don't show you 
after it's been converted to AC. Now this presents a problem to us because obviously we're looking for an independent test here about the usable energy, whether it's been converted or not. We need something independent to record our findings and we find it online. So this is Shelly. Well, she actually lives in this little box here. Now what Shelly does is she can monitor consumption or production of anything in your home and it's linked to Wi-Fi so you can view it in something called the Shelly Cloud. Now it's a really handy bit of kit and it came in super useful for us because it comes with CT clamps. So CT clamps are little clamps that sit around your system and we were able to put one on the SunSync AC line and also one on the end phase um, AC line and we we're able to monitor the current being passed from both of those systems. Sorry. This is Shelly. Yeah. Right, now back down here. Why are we back at the batteries? Because we've now got another problem. So Shelly's up, Shelly's running, Shelly's monitoring, but she's also monitoring discharge from the batteries that's skewing all of our figures. Because this is a hybrid system on the SunSync side, the power goes up from the batteries, gets converted and back down that AC line. And it's making all the figures look ridiculous and we can't monitor the system. So we had to come back to the property and ask the client if we could shut his batteries down for a year while we did this test, which means we had to compensate him for the money he was going to lose and to make things even worse, after 12 months, that battery has died. It's been off for so long, we've actually broken his battery. So not only we had to pay him to do this test, pay for the test, we've now got to buy him a new battery. So eventually it's working, we're testing, we've got accurate data and we're starting to log and record our findings. Now let's head to the office and go and find out, does it perform any better? So why did we do it? What was the point? Well, the point was ultimately trying to find the winning combination of a solar panel and an inverter solution. Because there's lots of claims from manufacturers. There's lots of information out there that's saying they've got the best system. What we were trying to find was that triple 20, not that. And hopefully we found it with this combination. Let's take a look. So our first slide here is Enphase. Now this is the Enphase Enlightened dashboard. So this tells you everything you need to know about your Enphase system. The difference with this type of system compared to a normal system is you can see the individual panel performance. But what we're looking at here is the date range. So this test ran from the 1st of May, 2023, all the way to the 29th of February, 2024. Yes, it was a leap year. And our total production, 1.54 megawatt hours. This one is SunSync. Now we don't use SunSync every day, so I found it a little bit more difficult to get the data, but I was able to extract it on here on a month by month basis. Now what this shows is the total production they reported and that came out at 1.407 megawatt hours. This was a really interesting one. This is net production. So using that Shelly device, we were able to measure the net AC output. Now with Enphase, spot on, 1.54 megawatt hours. However, SunSync, over reporting or reporting in a different place depending on how you look at it by nine percent so when we had the shelly data sunsync went from 1.4 megawatt hours down to 1.292 megawatt hours so a 24 hour comparison well more like a 15 hour comparison because obviously it's not sunny for 24 hours but what have we learned right the REA Enphase system turns on first and it shuts down last, but the winds don't stop there. Throughout this entire period, the REA system is performing higher, it's producing more energy. It seems to react quicker as the sun comes out, those steeper curves, and it just stays on and produces more over the period. It comes pretty close between sort of two and one o'clock, but it's still outperforming. And the net result of this day, 9.164 kilowatt hours for the REA end phase system and 7.66 kilowatt hours for the hybrid system. Okay, so monthly 
production in kilowatt hours. Now, just something to point out on this particular slide is this is two separate five panel systems. To get the total production, you obviously need to add them together, but the purpose here is to show the difference in performance. So May and June were our top performing months. July must have been pretty terrible because it dropped by about 20 kilowatt hours for both systems and then it slowly declines as you go into those winter months. What's interesting here is there's not a single month where the hybrid system outperforms the REA system. However, there were moments where the hybrid system could produce more energy. And this is all down to something called clipping. So the microinverters that were installed on this test were the IQ7 Plus. They've got a maximum output of 290 watt. The hybrid inverter has got a theoretical output of 3680 watt and it won't clip. So there were days when it was super sunny for consistent periods where the hybrid system did outperform the REA system. However, on a monthly basis, it never ever beat it. Flawless victory. So that previous slide got us thinking, how would these systems have performed if they were both 10 panel systems left to their own devices? So all we did was double the data to see in isolation. So the hybrid system, theoretically in the 305 days would have produced 2,584 kilowatt hours and that REA Enphase system would have produced a whopping 3,086 kilowatt hours. The difference between the two was 502 kilowatt hours over that 305 day period. On that point, I need to tell you why it was only 305 day test and not a full 365. Well, that was largely to do with the fact that when we were doing the test, we kept going back to do system health checks and monitor the progress of what was going on. And what we found was we'd actually broken that client's battery. At that point, he'd sort of had enough and we both agreed to put the system back how it was and get him back online. So with that in mind, we weren't able to actually collect a full 365 days worth of data. But what we were able to do is to simulate what it would have looked like using the data that we had. So based on these being 10 panel individual systems, here are the results. The REA system should have theoretically produced 3,693 kilowatt hours, and that hybrid system would still have produced an impressive 3,092 kilowatt hours. The net result was a 19.42% uplift in overall net usable power, and that equates to just over 600 kilowatt hours. So we hope that was interesting. Although it was painful to get here, it was interesting and hopefully it goes to prove that investing in higher quality kit does yield better results. Now there's just some things we wanted to point out before we finish the video and that's about the kit that we had on this property previously and also hybrid systems in general. So what we're absolutely not saying is that SunSync or Q-Cells or hybrid systems in general are poor quality kit that you shouldn't install. What we are saying is the claims from REA and Enphase in this instance, in this test, have been proved and are true. You generate up to 20% more energy, and that comes from a variety of different factors, but you should definitely consider it if you're installing solar PV panels at your property, should be aware of this video and you should be aware of the benefits of installing high performance panels with micro inverters. Now, quick caveat here, obviously this wasn't a very scientific test, we're not a university, it wasn't a published study, it's just a little video that we made and actually we started this as our own personal test to put the manufacturers to test and we just thought we'd share the findings with you. Now if you want to see more content like this, you want to see some more heatable videos, then please do like and subscribe to the Heatable YouTube channel.